a man regarded as a champion of the rule of law and justice. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to please stand as we welcome to the Mining in Darba 2019 His Excellency, the Honorable President Nana Akufo Addo of Ghana. I'm honored by the invitation to participate in this famous gathering in the land of Africa's greatest personality, Nelson Madiba Mandela. Now in his 25th year, the mining in Daba has certainly made its mark as the authoritative place for an exchange of ideas and experiences on mining in Africa. The theme you have chosen for your deliberations, championing Africa's sustainable economic growth, is certainly attractive enough to bring to Cape Town all of us who have the transformation of Africa at heart. Ladies and gentlemen, with our continent having been blessed with so many minerals, it is not surprising that mining has always played an important role in our lives. For centuries, our minerals have been the attraction for adventurers and fortune seekers. Many foreign thrones and crowns are adorned with the gems taken from our lands, not always through straightforward means. Our lands have been fought over and shared and divided along lines that show no rhyme or reason. The pursuit of gold and other minerals has reduced many of our forests to degraded lands, some of our rivers to polluted water bodies, and diamonds from our lands are now sometimes labeled blood diamonds. It is no wonder, therefore, that some describe these minerals as cursed instead of the blessing and good fortune they should be. The truth, however, is that mining is a necessity and not just an indulgence to satisfy aesthetics or curiosity. Mining has been an un important undertaking throughout the history of mankind. Everyday life is dependent on the minerals extracted from underneath the earth. Today, most of the things that we use ranging from the smartphones we own to the coins we spend to the electricity we consume emanate from metals and minerals that have been mined. The mining industry in many of our countries plays a critical role in our economies, providing considerable job opportunities. After centuries of exploitation, Africa currently is still home to 30% of the world's mineral reserves, and an even higher proportion of deposits of gold, platinum, diamonds, bauxite, and manganese. The story of mining in Africa has not always been a happy one. The irony is not lost on many that our continent, so rich in the minerals that are sought after by the world, should remain inhabited by the poorest people on the globe. The irony is, lost, is not lost on many that many of the areas from which the riches are mined look like the most deprived places on earth. There is no question that African countries have not always done well in negotiations with the companies that have mined our minerals. We've been handicapped in the negotiation process with the big mining companies because of political instability bad reputation, and sometimes incompetent and or corrupt representatives who negotiate on our behalf. The world has changed a lot since the early mining contracts were drawn. Today, we are a more politically stable continent and more committed to the rule of law, and thus mining companies cannot and should not stick to the perception of the high risk politically unstable place to do business labor. Some labor practices that were tolerated 100, even 20 years ago, cannot and should not be tolerated 
today. The distinguished Venerable Festus Mohai, former President of the Republic of Botswana, speaking at a meeting of the Africa Development Bank 10 years ago in December 2008, noted that previously African countries had to entice investors by granting extensive incentives such as extensive tax and royalty exemptions. Consequently, many countries earn little from such contracts. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we have come of age and we should not have to give unusual tax and royalty incentives and mining companies should not expect to make extraordinary profits on our continent. We are realistic enough to know the companies that come to do business must make their profit. But we want to work with them under the normal conditions that pertain in other parts of the world. It bears repeating here what I have said elsewhere. Africa needs her own set of smart, tough lawyers, accountants and engineers to negotiate the business deal in a transparent and honest manner. We must strike deals that are fair to both sides and can reassure the long-suffering African people that they are no longer being unfairly treated. Reviewing mining contracts is important for more than earning greater revenue. Governments must also respond to pressures from civil society groups and communities to ensure that contracts and mining codes address environmental protection adequate compensation to affected communities, and the rehabilitation of land after mining operations have ceased. Minerals are a public resource, and the negotiations between companies and countries should be transparent, accessible, and easily understandable by citizens. And that means we should do it all in language that does not need to be interpreted by experts. Communities should be able to examine mining contracts, finding out how much revenue has been generated and how and on what it is being spent. Long and bitter experience means both sides, African governments and mining companies, have to work hard to gain the trust of the people. One cannot, ladies and gentlemen, discount the illuminating report produced by a high-level panel chaired by the highly respected former president of this country, His Excellency Thabo Mbeki, which says that Africa is losing annually more than 50 billion United States dollars through illicit financial outflows. The report of the high-level panel on illicit financial flows from Africa commissioned by the Joint African Union Commission and the and United Nations Economic Commission for Africa Conference of African Ministers for Finance, Planning and Economic Development, revealed, in particular, that between 2000 and 2008, 252 billion United States dollars, representing 56.2% of the illicit outflow of funds from the continent, was from the extractive industries, including mining. And yet we know that the extractive sector, particularly mining, can help rapidly to grow Africa's manufacturing sector and be the champion of economic growth on the continent. That, of course, will not happen if Africa remains the place to come and dig minerals that are exported in their raw condition to be processed outside. We cannot and should not continue to be merely exporters of raw materials to other countries. The value chain of mineral extraction has great potential for job creation and can form an essential basis for the transformation of economies around the continent. We recognize the transparency and regulation of invested capital in junior mining companies underpin investment appeal. Over the years, our mining sector has been financed by capital markets on foreign exchanges. They have leveraged access to early stage investments to create significant wealth for investors offshore. 
The fact of the matter is that local capital within most mining jurisdictions in Africa face geopolitical constraints in the funding of early stage opportunities in their own countries. Canada, Australia, the Americas and South Africa have spectacular examples of considerable wealth created amongst individuals and corporations as a result of significant discoveries in faraway lands that are financed by early seed capital raised on their local exchanges. Ghana, undoubtedly, is amongst the most matured and stable mining jurisdictions in Africa. And for the first time, my government is putting together a regulatory framework and fiscal incentives to enable local companies list early stage promising prospects on our local stock exchange, thereby taking full advantage of these incentives. <laughs> this will allow local capital the benefits of the upside in project development, enable it to contribute effectively to the process of rapid economic development and transformation. We are now all more sensitive to the needs of the environment and the dangers posed by the degradation caused by reckless mining practices. We in Ghana have a big problem with the particularly dark side of mining, which has been leading to an alarming degradation of our lands and water bodies. We have a name for it in Ghana, Galamse, i.e. illegal mining. Time was when this was a relatively minor practice of individuals digging for gold in their communities. You could describe it almost as romantic as young people try their hands at it before moving on to their main professions. Now, it has become a large-scale and dangerous operation that has reduced our lands and water bodies to sad spectacles, mainly as a result of the introduction of sophisticated equipment and machinery into the field by foreign controls criminal syndicates. In Ghana, we moved to address this issue by initially placing a two-year ban on small-scale mining upon my assumption of office in January 2017 in order to fashion and implement policies on how to sanitize the sector and ensure that in future, small-scale mining would not damage our environment. We had to train some of the small-scale miners in responsible mining and find alternative livelihood resources for others who were engaged in illegal mining. Our efforts have begun to yield dividends. Some of the heavily polluted rivers are showing signs of being restored to health. And recently, there was a lot of excitement. Fish were seen again in one of the most famous rivers of our country, the Ancobra River, after many years of turpidity. We are determined to strengthen the regulatory framework for mining so that illegal mining, i.e. Galamse, does not reappear. I know that we are not the only ones experiencing this phenomenon, and there are other countries on the continent where illegal mining activities are threatening to overwhelm local authorities. The extreme case is probably the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, where its many minerals are such magnets for adventurers from around the world that they instigate the instability in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, earlier on I made reference to the state of mining communities in our country. I believe it is a point that cannot and should not be simply mentioned in passing. Take, for example, the town of Obwasi in Ghana, the home of Anglo Gold Ashanti, where there's been official mining for more than a century. In times past, it was said to be the richest gold mine in the world, and it has certainly made some people in the United Kingdom and the United States, and probably in South Africa too, very rich. So why does Obwasi not look like the place from where hundreds of millions of dollars have been made? It should be the most beautiful city in Ghana, or the world, if it hosts the richest gold mine. But it is far from it. After an absence of five years from the scene, 
because of the uncontrolled activities of illegal miners on its concession, the company is back again. I had the pleasure of reopening the mine two weeks ago on the 22nd of January under an agreement that balances more fairly the interests of the two sides, that is the government of Ghana and Anglo Gold Ashanti. As I said at the ceremony, it is my hope and expectation that this time round, under the new management of Anglo Gold Ashanti, the development of Obwase will reflect the wealth its soil produces. Why is the Kona region of Sierra Leone, where a local pastor digging around his garden can still find a 709 carat gem diamond not developed and prosperous? Why do towns from whose soils diamonds have been taken all these years not look like anything they produce riches? Why the mining com com communities generally in such poor conditions? The, st the stressed state of communities in which mining companies operate is nothing short of a disgrace and we must work to change that situation. Even though a few mining companies have over the years complemented the work of, Ghana, of government in these communities, I'm certain that a lot more can be done to transform the communities if government and the mining companies collaborate in an intelligent and sustainable manner. Ladies and gentlemen, the mining industry has what it takes to help them make the economic transformation we seek in Africa. Go to any mine, and it is obvious you are innovators, you are persistent, and you have expertise. How else do you find the minerals you see from the bowels of the earth? You are hard workers, and it shows in what you do. In addition to the exploitation of the traditional minerals of gold, diamond, and manganese in Ghana, we have also taken the decision at long last to exploit our considerable bauxite and iron ore deposits. We've established the Ghana Integrated Aluminum Development Corporation, a public corporation, to take charge of the development with appropriate investors of the full chain, the full value chain of our bauxite resources in order to establish an integrated aluminum industry in Ghana. We're also determined to build an integrated iron and steel industry out of our extensive iron, ore, and manganese deposits to serve the needs of our country and region. And to that end, Parliament in its current session will consider and hopefully approve the establishment of another public corporation, the Ghana Integrated Iron and Steel Development Corporation, which will, with appropriate investors, take charge of this undertaking. Another modern mineral, lithium, which is being used in several applications, is present in commercial quantities in Ghana. Work is currently underway, again with the appropriate investment to exploit it for the economic development of our country. We hope to establish in all these new ventures an equitable balance between our needs and the needs of the investor community. It is time for the mineral sector to produce win-win situations for all stakeholders. I do not need to tell you that there are undiscovered riches inside the bowels of the lands in Africa, but I want to remind you that there are riches on the, tops, on the top of the lands also in the form of a young, vibrant, and dynamic population who are anxious to work, and who, with the requisite skills, represent an extremely positive factor in the rapid development of the continent. We want you to stay here for the long term, respect the land that provides the riches, and be part of the transformation. Africa has made the world rich with our minerals, our gemstones adorn, adorn crowns and homes around the world. It is time to make Africa prosperous and enable her people to attain a dignified standard of living. Join us in this exciting project for sustainable economic growth. 
The people of Africa do not have to be poor for others to be rich. The state of modern technology has made it possible, probably for the first time in human history, to establish a global economy which can generate shared and mutually reinforcing prosperity for all the peoples of the world. The world can then look forward to the emergence of a new world civilization which, shorn of greed and cupidity, has boundless prospects for human advancement, where the overwhelming majority of mankind can live in dignity and security and give birth to a new extraordinary golden age where the arts, culture, philosophy, science and technology can flourish in an unprecedented scale. I thank you very much for your attention.